QuickBooks Online. Void check prior period adjustment. Get ready to start moving on up with QuickBooks Online. We're going to be using the free QuickBooks Online test drive searching in our search engine for QuickBooks Online test drive selecting then the option that has the Intuit.com within it Intuit being the owner of QuickBooks Online selecting the United States version of the test drive and verifying that we're not a robot. Zooming in a bit by holding down control up on the scroll wheel currently at 125% on the zoom in. We are in the accountant view. If I select the cog drop down, we could toggle back and forth between the two views. Currently, we'll be looking at the accountant view. We'll try to toggle back and forth from time to time to look at the differences. Right clicking on the tab up top to duplicate it. This is what we do every time to put our reports in these duplicated tabs. Right click in the duplicated tab to duplicate it again. Back to the middle tab. And then I'm going to go to the reports on the left hand side to be opening up the balance sheet report. Back up top again to the tab to the right. Reports again. This time the income statement or profit and loss report. Changing the dates for these reports. I will do that manually by selecting the date range. Type it as fast as possible, as easy as possible, which I think is two digits 010122, January 1st, 2022, and then tab to 123122, December 31st, 2022. Tab on the keyboard, run the report. I'm going to close the hamburger, hamburger, holding down control, scrolling in a bit. There it is. Tab to the left, and then I'll close up the hamburger, scroll up a bit change the range same way manually 010122 to 123122 and run the report that's the setup we do every time back to the first tab support accounting instruction by clicking the link below giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website broken out by category further broken out by course each course then organized in a logical reasonable fashion making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a youtube page we also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. So we've been going through, if I hit the drop down on the new button, the vendor items and that the vendor represents people that we are paying for goods and services, money going out at the end of the cycle, which we can either do through an accrual process, bill first, and then the pay bill, which is in essence a kind of check form, or directly we pay the bills as they become due, not entering bills, but entering expenses and checks. Now we wanna to just touch on the idea of, well, what if something gets in the system that is incorrect and I need to uh, remove it from the system, delete it or avoid it, there's an incorrect transaction. Most of the time when you're talking about uh, these type of transactions on the payment side, you're going to have a check or bill or I'm sorry, check or expense that was entered into, into the system, which, which isn't clearing the bank. It needs to be removed. It's not something that, that has cleared. So you have to avoid it typically. Now, QuickBooks is quite uh, forgiving in terms of allowing you to delete things, but you want to be quite careful deleting things. And you also want to be very careful if you're dealing with something that's in a prior period, especially a prior year, because uh, the, the, the way the accounting system works, that could mess things up. So let me show you what I mean here. Let's first enter a check or expense form. Let's just make it an expense form and we'll enter that into the system. And let's say we're gonna do it in the current year, which is 2022 here. So I'm gonna say that we are gonna say, let's just say AAA, we're paying again. I'm just making up a name for a vendor that'll show up at the top of the register. And then it's going to be coming out of the checking account. I'll put the current, I'll put the date in December. This year is the point. So I'm going to keep it in the current year and the method that we're going to have. I'll just say, it, I don't really need something else. Say cash, no reference number. And then down below, I'm going to put it into a test account. I'm just going to call it a test account that I'm going to set up. It's going to be an expense type of account. 
and I'm going to say it's going to be other business expense and it's a test account of the name. That's all I'm going to put here Add it. And we're going to have no description or I'll put test on the description. So I might be able to see that. And then 350 amount, not going to make it billable, not going to add a customer. So we have a standard expense that we've seen in a prior presentation. What's this going to do? It's going to decrease the checking account. And the other side is going to go to the account we assigned it to, which is going to be this test expense account right here. Let's see that saving it and closing it. And then I'm going to go back to my reports and refresh the reports. So I'll run it again. And then I'm going to dive in or drill down on the checking account. So if I go into the checking account and we scroll down to the bottom of the checking account, there's the AAA transaction there for the test account. That looks good. I'm going to scroll back up, back to my balance sheet, and then check the income statement side, tab to the right, making sure we, we refresh, run the report, holding control, scrolling up a bit, and then I'm going to move on down to that test account. There's the test account here. So there's the transaction. Now, what if we, what if that transaction was wrong? We need to delete it. It was duplicated or something, or it was entered in error. Now, if we need to adjust it, then of course I can go into it here. I can click on it and say, I could uh, go into it and actually change the data in the transaction uh, and, and adjust it. Now that's not something that you would often want to do in a full service accounting system because usually you don't want to go back and adjust transactions that were put in place, but rather uh, make adjustments going forward into a transaction in the future that corrects the problem so that you can see the problem and then the correction so that you have an audit trail would be the point. But oftentimes, like let's say that uh, you got the bank feed and the bank feed says that it was $300 and not 350 for whatever reason, and you might then just adjust that transaction if you know that that transaction was right to basically be the proper transaction. So you gotta be very kind of careful of doing that, but obviously QuickBooks has a lot of leeway to do that. If you're working in an accounting department in a larger company, they might restrict your capacity to ch of course change transactions that ha have already been put in place. So you don't kind of mess up the prior transactions and so that we have an audit trail of, of everything that is happening, but a lot of flexibility in QuickBooks, which can be good, but also can lead to uh, problems. Now, also you could think, well, what if I need to delete it entirely? It was duplicated. It's not going to clear the bank. I know it was wrong. Well, you, again, you could go into the transaction this way and in the more item, you can delete it and you can void it. Now there's a difference between these two things. If you delete it, it's going to remove it entirely. So it's as if it, it was never there. If you void it, then once again, you kind of have that audit trail. So voiding it is kind of like deleting it, but you still have the remnants of it there so that you can, you can see that you voided it uh, in that there. But even voiding is not perfect because you have to be careful if you're doing something in a prior period, if you're going to mess up the prior period, especially the prior year. So for example, let me show you what I'm going to close this out and scroll up and go back to uh, the report. Notice that this amount that we have included in, in here is in net income. It's included in the net income down below. And that net income is going to be part of the balance sheet. So it's over here on, uh, on net income in the balance sheet in the equity section. Now, let's say that, that, la that you entered this into the system as of 2022. That means for small businesses in the United States filing their taxes, they would have got the deduction because it's an expense. If they deducted on their taxes, they would have gotten that in 2022 uh, when they wrote it off and it would be part of the balancing here in the, in the equity section of the balance sheet. If we then rolled up to the next year, 2023, for example, if I go up to 2023 and uh, 2023, and then run the report and I scroll down the, the net income that was down here has now rolled in to the retained earnings. So if, if I go back in and delete something that happened last year, I'm messing up kind of the beginning balance of the retained earnings, which becomes a problem going forward. And if I, so, so what we want to do is make the reversal, make the adjustment basically in the current period. And to make that more clear, let's go from prior year 2021 into 2022. 
So I'm going to go back into that transaction again. Let's go into the, let's change the range again. Let's go from 2022 to 2022. Run the report. I'm going to go back into that checking account. And then I'm going to scroll down and find, find the transaction uh, that we, so there it is. I'm going to go into it and let's change the date to make it at the end of 2021. So I'm going to make this as of, 12 31 uh, 21 12 31 21 and then I'll change it so notice you can change you uh, QuickBooks allows you to, to go in and change things now we put it put it into the prior period so if I scroll back up I go back to my balance sheet and I look at that same kind of problem if I go from 010121 to what what happened there from 010121 to 123121 and then run it so now that has been included in the checking account for 2021 if i go into that there there it is i'm going to go back to my balance sheet and if i go to the tab to the right on the income statement and i go from 010121 to 123121 and run that report for the prior year again you could see the expense in the prior year which is part of which is part of the retained earnings. If I'm currently in 2022 and I go back to 2021 and delete that because for example it wasn't clearing the bank account, then I already you can already think of like I deducted it last year. What I really should be doing is reversing it this year, right? I don't want to redo my financial statements which have already been finalized for the prior year. From a small business perspective, for example, you don't want to redo your taxes for last year because you had a deduction that wasn't really a deduction because that expense wasn't right or whatever. You want to reverse it uh, in the current year. So if I void the transaction, which I need to do for the bank reconciliations, because those are going to show up on the bank reconciliation, even though they're not, it, it's not something I'm, that it was a true transaction, then it's going to mess up that, that rollover process. So let me show you that if I go back on over. Usually when you adjust these, you would then adjust them possibly in the register. So oftentimes, instead of going back into it from the financial statement and voiding it, if it was a prior period adjustment, I would go into the register, which is in my accountant. I'm sorry, it's in the accounting area on the left-hand side. I want to see the chart of accounts. And then I'm going to close the hamburger. I'm going to go into the checking account and I'm going to go into the register. So I'm going to go into the register and my goal is at the end of 2021. So I'm looking for that uh, transaction. There it is. What my goal is to avoid it, but also make the reversal happen in the current year as of the current date in the current year. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually make another transaction, which will duplicate this so that I can still keep it in the prior year. Then I'm going to avoid this transaction so that I can see in the detail that it has been voided and I have a paper trail and then I'm going to actually do the reversal in the current period. So it's kind of a tedious process uh, that you got to be aware of if you're kind of adjusting something in a prior period. So I've sorted it so I can see that one right next to it. I sorted the date field and then I'm going to select a journal entry right here. So I'm going to add another item. I'm not going to make it another expense form. I'm going to make it a journal entry because that'll be something distinct that'll kind of uh, show that this is kind of an adjusting process as part of the voiding process to me. And then I'm going to make this as of 123121. And then I'm going to say this is going to be for AAA. And I'm just going to mirror the transaction. I'm going to call it a voiding entry. And it's going to be for the same 350, 350. And the account is going to be going to the test account. So now it's going to be in there uh, two times once I record this. So it's in there with the original one and then once again. And so I'm going to say save it. And so now what I can do is I can void the original one. So now I'm going to avoid the original one. So I can I can go on to this one. I'm not going to delete it. I want to void it. So I'm going to go into the editing of it. And then down here, we've got the option of voiding. So now I'm going to void that one. So now are you sure you want to void? I'm going to say I should want to void. I'm going to say yes, I would like to void it. So there it is. So now it still shows up with it for audit trail purposes as avoided amounts. So the check would still be there or the expense form, but now it is voided. 
and then I'm going to enter the transaction into the current period for the reversal of the transaction. And once again, this time I'm going to do that with a journal entry because that'll be an indication that's part of the voiding process. So I'm going to say a journal entry as of the current period, which I'm going to say 12, 21, let's say 2, 2. And that's in the current year now, not in the prior year of 2021. And I'm going to say this is going to go AAA again. And we're going to say the memo void, voiding entry. And so the amount is now going to be on uh, the deposit side of 350. And then the account is going to be the test account. So now this one is going to net out. So it's going to net out against this item, which will basically neutralize it, but it will do so in the current period. I'm making the adjustment in the current period as, as opposed to kind of deleting it from the prior period because I already finalized the financial statements in the prior period. So if I save that and check it out, let's see what happens and why we would do this. Well, if I go back to the balance sheet now, and if I'm going into the balance sheet and running the balance sheet as of 2021, I can go into the detail for 2021. And now we've got the voided item. I can see the audit trail for the voided item, but I put the voided item back on uh, the books here. So we're basically at the same place, but uh, now I, I can see basically the audit trail. And then if I go back on over and then we fixed it as of the end of 2022. So if I if I bring this up to uh, 010122 to 123122 and then run it. So now if I go back into here, we made the adjustment. So when I reconcile in 2022, we'll be able to to uh, see the adjustment, which is this journal entry right here. So now we've reversed it, but we did so in the current period rather than the prior period. Now these, this amount was probably still showing on the bank reconciliation, which would alert us to the fact that we have this transaction that's not a real transaction. So we have to get rid of it somehow. And these two amounts then, these two journal entries, if they show up on the bank rec, we can just check both of them off and that would neutralize them. So they would kind of net off against each other. So I'm going to go back on over on the income statement side of things. If I run the report and I'm currently in 2021, the prior year, I still have this 350 there. I didn't change it. I didn't change the equity at this point in time. That's what I want because I already finalized the income statement and possibly used it, for example, to do my taxes with. I'm not going to redo my taxes in 2021 unless there's a substantial kind of problem with it. So if I go into it and I say, okay, then there it is. I can see the audit trail, but I'm back into the same position. And then I'm going to go back on over. If I change it to 2022, 010122 to 123122 and run it, and I scroll down to the test account, now you'll note that I have a negative expense account because it's the only thing in there. And so basically I'm reversing the fact that I over deducted. I had too much expense in the prior year because it wasn't a valid transaction. I don't want to reverse it in the prior year because I already did. I already finalized the financial statements. I want to reverse it in the current year, which you can see is what is happening here. That's why we have a negative uh, kind of expense account. And so that that now also just note that if you're if you're working with an accountant and you delete things in the prior year, that problem will show up on the balance sheet because your beginning balance will not tie out properly. So if I go down uh, to my to my balance sheet, if I was to if if I was to run my report on my balance sheet from 010121 to 1231 and run that report, you can see now that I had net income last year of the 350. If it was 350 on the net income in my equity section and then I deleted that transaction, the beginning balance in my equity wouldn't roll over correctly. It would be 350 off. Uh, in the in the current year. So when I roll this up to, to 2022, 010122 to 123122 and run it. So now that 350 rolled over to retained earnings. So if I was doing someone's taxes or something like that, and I was trying to reconcile their balance sheet from last year to the current year, then I would expect there to be the 350 and if the 350 wasn't in the retained earnings and it was if it was said instead zero because i deleted it 
that would be an indication that there's a problem. We wouldn't be able to reconcile the equity section, the retained earnings, the statement of equity wouldn't uh, roll over properly. And that's an indication that someone deleted something in the prior period. And then you get into this whole mess. So bottom line, uh, when you're voiding checks, you want to be very careful. When you're deleting anything, be very careful and be very, very careful if it's in a prior period, whether that be a prior month, but especially if it's in a prior year, because you've probably finalized the year already. And so you want what you want to do is try to make the changes in such a way that it's going to have an impact. The reversal happens in the current year because you're not you're not going to reissue the prior year financial statements. In other words, for small businesses, you're not going to redo your taxes typically unless you have to, unless there's significant error or something like that. You want to make the adjustment uh, in a way that will fix the current period. So you might want to talk to your accountant and is another uh, point when you're kind of uh, deleting the stuff or thinking about reversing things or voiding uh, items.